When I first saw the character designs for Bokuyaba, The Dangers in My Heart, I thought, this has got to be the most shameless, wish fulfillment laden garbage I have ever seen in my life. The main character, he's this short, scrawny kid with bangs drooping over one of his eyes. Meanwhile, the girl he likes, she's this tall, busty model, despite being in junior high school, and she looks like she's about one to two feet taller than him. I get the idea that in many romance stories, the main character is going to go in after someone completely out of his league, or her league, but there have got to be limits. This just looks ridiculous. Now, I realize there's perhaps a symbolic way to view all this. Perhaps if you're a junior high school kid with no self-confidence, then even if you actually look kind of good, you still on the inside might feel like that scrawny kid with a bad haircut. And the girl you like, even if she's actually not that good looking, to you, if you're in love with her, maybe she feels like the ideal adult woman. But I'm a what you see is what you get kind of guy, I don't care for symbolism, and these two just look kind of ridiculous together. Also, another reason I didn't really want to watch the show was because it was part of this, or at least it appeared to be part of this burgeoning subgenre of school rom-coms in which you have a main character who's kind of a self-insert male, kind of timid, and there's a girl in his class who's kind of quirky who he has a crush on. So whenever these two interact, they, he almost feels flustered and hilarity ensues. I've seen enough of these kinds of shows lately, I don't really care for them, I didn't feel like I wanted to watch another. Whatever the demographic is for this kind of subgenre, I'm not in it. But the review scores were really high, so I decided to check it out anyway. The first half of the show was pretty much exactly what I expected, um, except I guess it was a little edgier. Um, the main character, he has these dark fantasies, and also some of the guys in his class, they have some fairly explicit sex talk, but still, the comedy... That was basically just what I'd expected. You have, for example, a scene where, oh my god, this girl I like, she's eating in the library. You're not supposed to do that, but a teacher's coming. How am I going to help her out? I know, I'll hide behind a bookshelf and snag that bag of potato chips when she's not looking. But oh no, now she's hiding behind the bookshelf too. We're so awkward together, but we can't go anywhere until the teacher leaves, so we're just stuck together. Oh my god, I'm so flustered. And... Yeah, that's what the whole show was like for the first half of the first season. What I expected, not that entertaining. But miraculously, about halfway through the first season, things get really good. Mild spoiler here, this is about when the romance looks like it's starting to go both ways. And at this point, it shifts from a comedy-heavy rom-com to more of a romance-heavy rom-com, or even a more dramatic rom-com, and it gets really, really good. You start to root for the two main characters to get together, even though they look and feel so different. The pacing is really good. That's one of the things that really separates this from the other high school rom-coms. In other high school rom-coms, you get two characters kind of twiddling their thumbs and running around in circles while nothing develops. In this show, things progress. And why is the pacing good? Why do things progress? This is the best part of the show. It's because the main character repeatedly steps up and makes things progress by making the right decisions to push the show along. That's, in my opinion, what this whole series is about. When there's a fork in the road, and one side of that fork, it'll take you down a path where you can get what you want and take what you know in your heart is the best action. But on the other hand, it might leave you emotionally vulnerable. Then there's the other fork in the road, the other path in the road. It's the passive path. It doesn't put you at risk, but you're not going to make things progress now. Maybe in the long run, you'll get the exact same results you wanted. But for now, nothing's going to change. What are you going to do when you reach that fork in the road? This show says, take action. Make things happen, because if you want something, you've got to go out and get it. No one's just going to uh, give it to you. Just Nothing's going to make that fall into your lap if you don't take action yourself. Like, if you're um, the girl you like, if it's Valentine's Day, give her that present. Don't pussy out of that. If there's some kind of misunderstanding with her parents, you better clear that up. Don't just let that misunderstanding linger and perhaps let the romance slip away. You have to be proactive. You do what it takes to make progress happen, and that's why the show is good. The main character, even though he looks like a wuss, he learns to man up and take the action that's necessary to get with the girl he likes. So, I would say... Second half of the first season's good, first half not so much, so double plus for the first season, triple plus for the second season, the whole season is just one great episode after another, and I'd say double plus for the show overall. 
Uh, like I said in my previous video, I think that while they were airing together, Freeran and the second season of this show, Bokuyaba, The Dangers of My Heart, this show was the better show episode to episode. I think eventually Freeran will be the better show overall. After all, Freeran hasn't ended yet, and this show has the benefit of having an ending. But still, that's how highly I regard this, even though I really didn't expect to at all, based on the character designs and based on the genre. So if you can get past those two things, this is a very strong recommendation.